So next talk we have building next gen IoT solutions using Python and cloud. The speaker for today uh, this talk is Abhishek Narayan and Saurabh. Abhishek, Abhishek is a technical uh, evangelist and has worked as a consultant for Microsoft and Infogistics. Saurabh is a technical evangelist and has worked on technologies such as Azure, game development, and client web development. Good morning. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people. Uh, I expected a little more. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. OK. Uh, great to see this crowd. It's pretty awesome. And uh, we'll try to keep up to your expectations as well. And uh, as you see, this talk is mostly about Internet of Things. So just a quick hands up. How many of you have you tried with uh, embedded programming or Internet of Things programming? Wow. And how many of you were there yesterday in the workshop? Um, OK, cool. Yep, you were there. So in today's talk, what we'll do is we'll talk about Internet of Things, the whole scenario first. And then uh, we'll take you through some interesting demos on, on Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, and you know play around with those things. And it's going to be pretty basic. And we'll use, of course, um, um, the language of the day, which is Python. Uh, and how many of you, just to understand, how many of you also work on Node.js? Pretty good. OK, I can do something of a small server creation there as well. And then you guys should be able to ping that and then uh, query a few stuff. So we'll do those crazy stuff based on the time that we have. Uh, so Internet of Things is nothing but physical objects, you know, network of physical objects that contain embedded technology. This was already, already there. People were using embedded all the time. Now with the better connectivity, um, we are able to connect these all together pass the data somewhere, and then do more uh, meaningful analytics on top of that. So this whole scenario is basically what people uh, call that as Internet of Things. OK, and core, four core aspects. Why Internet of Things is not just about uh, doing a blinky on uh, Raspberry Pi 2. is because uh, we've got to think about, yes, from the device's standpoint, and uh, there are a lot of uh, things like uh, security of the data, because when we talk about Internet of Things, we are actually, uh, for instance, reading a home sensor data value and putting it somewhere uh, for analytics. And then uh, this communication from this small device to somewhere else uh, needs to be secured because your data is at stake. Now, a lot of things, uh, privacy concerns can come up over there. So uh, connectivity is a key important area in Internet of Things, which we'll talk about. And then, of course, analytics. The whole idea of Internet of Things is so that you can, embedded devices were there already. Uh, we can get some value out of those embedded devices and then figure out some patterns based on um, you know, ML, machine learning. Uh, and then we can do some predictive analytics, or, which can help business do better. right? So that's like the core idea what an enterprise would think about. So we'll talk about analytics as well. So these are the four key tenets which uh, covers the Internet of Things. And some stats about Internet of Things. Uh, 50 billion devices in numbers. So these are the numbers expected to be uh, by 2020. Started with about 50 billion, now it's up to 212 billion. And the market for that is expected to be about 1.9 trillion. So these are just some of the facts to actually see why Internet of Things is a buzz right now. And uh, there are multiple examples associated, associated to that. So. Uh, you, even you, uh, all of you would have heard of something or the other. I mean, I love to give this example of agriculture, where uh, you can remotely control a farm from your place when you're sitting somewhere else, and you can see whether you want to actually water that farm or not. And you can actually turn on the tap based on based on that sensor data as well. There are multiple examples of that. We'll see some more as we go along. Yep, and, and yep. Uh, this is some example of um, you know how we can compute how Internet of the things can really help us save money. Uh, this one example, in uh, commercial aviation industry, 1% uh, of fuel consumption, if you save that 1%, 1% person, one person isn't that much, but somehow by automation or whatever, if we can kind of optimize that, uh, it gives us savings over $30 billion over 15 years, which is a huge number. $30 billion is, is a huge amount, right? Similarly, for other industries, we'll just quickly run through. This for energy and gas industry, 1% plant efficiency gain equates to like $66 billion. This for healthcare, $63 billion. 
Similarly, for freight transport, railways, and so on, uh, oil and gas, $90 billion. So there's a lot of money here why enterprises are pushing towards Internet of Things these days. And this is why we are talking here, so that all of us can actually focus on Internet of Things and then get started with building solutions on top of it. right? And this is a Gartner hype cycle. So what you see on the top is Internet of Things. It's very difficult to see from that far. Um, control 1 works. So, <clears throat> no, it doesn't work there in that view, yeah. right? So um, this is Internet of Things, which is like on the hype cycle top of it from, this is Gartner's hype cycle, so uh, most hyped technology right now. And uh, no wonder why you know, we should be thinking about or we should be good at Internet of Things because it really helps us in the future. Um, and then we'll talk about these industries. So uh, these are those common use case scenarios of different industries, how they are using Internet of Things. We have a few customers we can talk about. We won't, uh, you want to talk about? Actually, we have uh, one which we are working with closely, uh, a company called Tyson Crow. Has anyone heard of that? OK, so uh, they make escalators, lifts, and all of those things. So even, hello. Yeah, yes. so I need to be closer to the mic, sorry. So uh, it's a company which makes escalators, elevators, and uh, uh, they're partnering with us to basically figure out when do you want to actually maintain, uh, schedule a maintenance for the elevator. So consider uh, they've put up some sensors which can actually detect that, uh, say, two weeks down the line, this elevator will need some repair. And before an anything fatal happens or uh, before actually something manual happens and the technician comes and takes care of that, uh, they're able to predict that beforehand and they, and they use uh, machine learning and all of those things at the back end to just figure out some uh, data out, figure out some meaning out of that and take some action based on that. That's a live example. We have multiple based on that as well. We have smart building homes. Yep, so how many of you are wearing a wearable? Band, smart band, smart watches. Wear, Fitbit, band. Okay, so I mean that's one space where um, you know people think uh, next, like the, the mobile boom is gonna move towards that, wearables and so on with those technologies. And that is where IoT comes in straight away for consumers, right? Wearables is nothing but Internet of Things stuff for consumers. Uh, that's one example. Uh, now, the other stuff is one of the, the enterprise ones because there's more money there. Um, one of the bigger, um, one of the biggest diesel engine manufacturers uh, in this world, they have used one solution, um, which I know of. Uh, they, ha they have microcontrollers there in the engine. Uh, they have used uh, various sensors in it, uh, which gives out values back uh, to the, to the uh, mobile app using your uh, Bluetooth connectivity system in, inside the car. Uh, and uh, that helps, like this mobile app analyzes that data, sends it back to the car manufacturer, uh, and also the service centers. So all, you know, all of a sudden, you will get to know uh, you, a message or a call from service centers saying your car needs maintenance because the brake is 80% uh, bad. Uh, and your car needs uh, maintenance, right? So these are the kind of things how Internet of Things is really coming into picture in services industries, in, in everything in services. So it, it is really awesome if someone tells your car is gonna break down before it literally breaks down, right? So this is a apt scenario of Internet of Things. <coughs> well, uh, before we get started, we gotta know this. Um, when we say Internet of Things, we can use a server machine with sensors, sending data, all those things. Um, it can be called as Internet of Things, right? Uh, so we there are basically four different types here. So one is the large one. Generally, when you go uh, to watch a movie, you have a kiosk, you tap on it, get your tickets printed, and so on. Or, or on while you book, take a flight, you can do a online check-in using kiosks. So those are large devices. Then you have the mobile devices where you uh, can use a, for instance, you buy something from Flipkart. They come up with a small device where you can swipe your card. Uh, that can pretty much be a mobile device running an industry-based operating system on it, and then that can uh, do all your trans secure transactions for your credit cards. Then you have a small device, which is pretty much what we will show today, um, and Raspberry Pi is part of that, and uh, uh, all the embedded stuff comes in, and then we have even smaller device, which we'll also show. Uh, it's lying down there. Uh, it's um, uh, Arduino Uno. It's mostly like a microcontroller. Microcontroller, microprocessor, there's a difference. Uh, it's a very, very tiny device with less memory, uh, with a single thread uh, running. So the programming there looks a little more challenging, like especially for me, uh, not coming from that space, uh, because I always run out of memory. Uh, so 
uh, these are those microcontrollers, but these are pretty cheap and uh, very, very nice for doing one task or two tasks. Like, just keep doing that all the time. So reading things from the sensors, it helps us save a lot, lot of costs. So the way you go up, the cost increases. And while you talk about Internet of Things and millions of devices connected, uh, your cost really goes up when you select something from the large. The programming becomes easier, but the cost goes up really high. So these are some devices. Uh, Arduino Uno, microcontroller, uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, you have a Tessel board. JavaScript guys would love that. Uh, and then you have a few other things, Intel Edison and stuff, which works with Linux. How many of you uh, use Linux? Wow. <laughs> so so I, I was thinking of doing this whole IoT scenario using Windows IoT. But <laughs> thank God. Thank God. OK. Uh, we so, have Linux ready. Yeah, we have Linux ready, right? So uh, it's all good, right? So Linux is pretty awesome for uh, working on such hardwares. And we'll actually use that here. Um, and moving forward. Uh, then comes the next part before we get into the demos is uh, this part, which is more trivial. Um, we can do processing locally. We can have, uh, we can use, absolutely use Python libraries here. Uh, but when we talk about millions of devices, of course, it's got to be connected. Internet of Things scenario or something on the server is, is more meaningful. I can still use server, uh, Python on the server side. Uh, to do more meaningful analytics. And that's where uh, the basic thing comes in, collection of data. Because we know when the data is there in the store, I can run my stuff there, get the data. Collection is actually a big issue with Internet of Things devices. Uh, when we say 1 billion devices, like 1 billion devices, right? 1 billion devices can't do a REST call to an API. And then uh, at every second, uh, I might not have a scalable enough API to be actually collecting that. So that is where. Uh, we need some infrastructure which can just blindly any number of data per second, it can just collect. So we'll talk about that. Then uh, analysis, uh, we'll talk about those things. Uh, consumption, of course, you got to, uh, you, you have like information, like you have the data, which is not yet information. You run something over there, get the information, show it in beautiful dashboards. Uh, that's the whole thing uh, looks like. OK, uh, predictive analytics. This is one key thing of Internet of Things. Um, I mean, this is just one thing that multi IoT can be used for. But you can act actually do a lot of predictions uh, based on uh, uh, training your uh, neural networks, or it's called machine learning here. Uh, so you can absolutely use that. And this is a little complex, but this is how enterprises use that. So you have smaller IoT devices. We talked about the lower end one, the cheaper ones. These guys are cool. They can also somehow do HTTP calls, but they can't do that securely, right? If you want some protocol like uh, AQMP or MQTT or you know some protocols which are in use in IoT for sending data, uh, it might not support that. So the old legacy IoT devices and the low power devices like Arduino uh, should ideally be connected to some gateway. It can be a Raspberry Pi gateway, some server, something, uh, and that channel communication is under you. So you secured that part. So when you're putting that there, because security is a concern, as I said, right? And it's very easy to leak data out of these lower devices because they can't really, you can't run an encryption algorithm there and the small device encrypts data, sends it back, and so on. So uh, got to be careful. Uh, have a field gateway or something which collects the data, which scenario which will show you. And if you have IP-capable devices uh, which can actually Take care of the security, well and good. You can absolutely do that, just like a mobile app can be a scenario. Mobile app can do that. So if you have an app running uh, in an IoT scenario, which is syncing data from my wearable to that mobile app, mobile app to that cloud, uh, works well with that IP capable devices. And then internally, from the devices side, um, you have stream event processor. You get events, collect that events in Events Hub, or um, you can use um, Kafka. You can use uh, Events Hub, which is a managed service. And then you can give it to an event stream event processor. So in real, it's mostly like near real time. So you can do a near real time processing of the data, which comes from different sensors. So you can monitor them in real time. And then we can, we'll go back to data visualization. Yeah. We'll move on to the good stuff picture. Now, there are certain architectural stuff here, which will not go much in detail, which is mostly from uh, how you create your solution. What kind of, it all depends on what kind of uh, data analytics do you want to do. For instance, I want to store data of my temperature sensors somewhere, but I want to create a trigger alerts as well. So I will create two different streams of my data. One goes to my uh, cheap storage stores over there. 
The other one, I can plug into my event processor and check for uh, alert conditions, like temperature when it goes above 30 degree, and then uh, call some API to notify whoever the right guy is, right? So I can have a hot and a cold data store, and similarly, it's, it's mostly called as Lambda architecture in IoT, so we can create that, absolutely. Now, so we have the app sending data, app or small device, to uh, Azure or Kafka. Uh, then we have a stream event processor processing that guy. Uh, it can pass the data to ML uh, service uh, for you know training, machine learning, and so on. Or uh, finally, we can display that data to the dashboard. So ML can act as a trigger, or, or you know stream analytics can act as a trigger, uh, send it back to another event processor from where you will display the data into Kibana. You have you know a lot of options there. So let's get started with the scenario. This is what we will take you through. Uh, you have the sensors. Uh, sensors directly talking to this. It can be a mobile app uh, with my Microsoft band sending data. Uh, it can be a sensor to a gateway. This would be a Raspberry Pi. Uh, or it can be you know, uh, going all to the ingestion of the cloud, ingesting into the cloud. And then we'll use uh, as much of analytics as we can in this. And then we'll show that to you. So you want to switch stuff? OK, so give us a quick minute before we switch. Uh, different laptops, what we will do is, would you be able to keep this on the top? He shows you this stuff, uh, just to kind of confuse you guys a little bit more. Uh, think of a scenario uh, in an IoT, how would you be able to ping a small device? Like this device sending is pretty simple. Uh, how would I ping this device back from somewhere over the web, right? Like how I could do a ping to a server, how would I probably do that on this small Raspberry Pi uh, thing, right? So we'll see that a little later. But uh, that is one scenario, you know, problem with Internet of Things these days. Generally, it's not that you need a server there. But in case if you need, like imagine if I have to switch on, switch off lights, right? Uh, I would need to, like, hit back to the server, give a message. Uh, so for that, we'll talk about it a little later. Right now, so uh, how many of you have worked on some form of IoT before? Any board, any sensors? OK, uh, a good number then. So uh, how many of you have worked on Arduino? Excellent. So for all of those who have worked on this, they, they would be familiar with this environment. It is the Arduino IDE. So I'll first, first of all give you an overview of what is happening here. This device right here, uh, the red part is a sensor. It is called a weather shield sensor. This will just give me things like temperature, uh, humidity, and light readings, and multiple others. Uh, if I put up some more modules onto it. Uh, below this, I have just ba basically put this sensor on top of a uh, Arduino. And Arduino is uh, basically your microcontroller in which you can uh, put some code and try to, try to run some basic stuff onto it. The only, uh, for those who have worked on, who have heard of Raspberry Pi or other things, Consider this as a very, very basic form of a development board because this uh, I, I have an Arduino Uno with me right now, which means uh, it will have some basic capabilities, so I can do some sm uh, small things al along with it. So for right now, what I've done is I've just basically taken my sensor and put this red thing, and I, I, I put it on top of the Arduino board. The connections are made. I want to capture the temperature and the humidity from this sensor, and I want to display it on my screen right now. Uh, after a few minutes, what we'll do is we'll try to make some more meaning out of this. So uh, instead of just viewing it here, we'll try to push this data to cloud. And from there, we'll try to fetch it. And once you get it to the cloud, you can play around with it a lot. Uh, if you have data, you can do analysis on top of it. You can create dashboards out of it. You can do multiple things. That is the real power where the IoT scenario will come into uh, the picture. Because once you read the data, you need to do something, some, some, form, uh, some analysis on top of it to make some sense. So, Right now, I have this sensor connected uh, with me. Uh, it's connected f uh, from this port. This is the USB port for this Arduino. It's connected to my laptop with a simple USB. The wire is A to B, so the smaller USB port is here. And uh, the code I have right now, uh, I'll just give you a basic overview of what's happening here. Uh, this is just taking the in inputs from my sensor. Uh, it's written in C++. So for those who are familiar, they will be able to find this out. I'll share the link of uh, where this is hosted as well. But 
This will just start giving you data, temperature, humidity, and light. So the first thing you see is uh, the format is JSON. Uh, and the initial parameters are simply things which, which we are passing through our code. We are passing a grid, we are passing a organization name. I think it won't be visible. It'll probably be visible now. So it's, it's uh, displaying the uh, grid, it's showing me the location. The thing which is of interest to me is the things which, which are of interest to me are these things. So uh, I'm capturing temperature. It's showing me, uh, showing me the values in Celsius. It's F written there, but I have converted that to Celsius. Uh, it's showing me light in lumens, and it's, and it's showing me humidity as well. So uh, humidity will come as I uh, uh, told down. But the temperature right now, it's showing me 24.75. This is the current temperature of the room. And uh, in fact, if you just want to check if things are working fine. Yeah, you see that it is just auto-scrolling. It's just going down and down. And we have just set the timer to one second. So it's just starting showing me some more data. Uh, basic serialization into JSON. I mean, and yeah, go on. The sensor says it's too cold here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> these days we have like so cool CPUs that, you know, it, it emits like cold air. <laughs> Not okay. Coming? Yeah, not coming. Okay. Okay. We'll have to. We'll just do this again while I'll talk. I'll talk. You just set okay. this up. Okay. So this is. Uh, he'll just show what's happening here, but you got the idea, right? So this is what's happening. I'm getting data in JSON. The next part. The next part of this uh, would be, uh, I've deployed code to Arduino, and now to actually push it to cloud, uh, I'll be using a gateway, uh, and the gateway which I'm using is a Raspberry Pi. How many of you worked on that Raspberry Pi? OK, so almost uh, the Arduino guys have worked on Raspberry Pi as well, I believe. So uh, this is a Raspberry Pi. For those who have, haven't seen this before, I won't be able to push it further because of the connections. But this is what it, what it looks like. And this is a proper PC. So in fact, I've connected this to my keyboard, to my uh, mouse. And let me just go ahead and connect it to the monitor as well. Hold on, hold on. You want to see data? OK, OK, OK. OK, in the meanwhile, he does that. Yeah. Uh, I'll be, the next step I'll be doing is I'll take this Arduino, just plug it out from my laptop, the USB port, and put it right here. This has four USB ports. I utilize two, one for keyboard, one for mouse. Uh, it has a HDMI port. So I'll just display this to the monitor so that you, you guys are able to see the uh, Raspbian OS running there. So Raspberry Pi, by default, you can run multiple OSs on top of it. Raspbian is a flavor of Linux. Uh, and we will run Raspbian there. We'll take the input which is coming from that uh, Arduino in JSON, take that input, connect it to cloud using something called Events Hub. So uh, for those of who, are, uh, who have worked on Azure, they'd be familiar with something called an Events Hub, which is basically a, a service which lets you ingest millions of events per second. So consider this, if you're actually in an IoT scenario, you'll be having multiple sensors deployed across multiple locations, each of them sending data probably at regular intervals. So just to facilitate that for massive data ingestion up to millions and millions of records, we are, we are using something called Events Hub in which we'll integrate those events and put it and ingest it onto cloud. After that part is done, Events Hub, then we'll start analyzing the data, which means now this thing which we have captured, this can go to multiple things. So this can go to a job which can display it to a dashboard, uh, something called a Power BI dashboard, if you've heard of that. Or we can just simply display it into a table in a table format that whichever JSON values I want to read from this, I can go ahead and display it in the form of a table. So for today, we'll, we'll display it in the form of a table. We'll tell you something about how to go about with dashboards as well. And uh, uh, are you ready? Compiling, compiling. OK. Yeah, I think uh, probably that So sometimes you're going to uh, like trust in the god. So something will happen. OK, let me just connect this to the Raspberry Pi. Yep, you can. In there, uh, to read the value from this coming from the serial port. So in this code, if you see, if I were to show you here, we were using something called as a baud rate to sending data. So wh what happens here uh, in serial communication is we've got to tell at what rate the data is coming here. So we will put that same guy uh, in Raspberry Pi code itself uh, to look out for, uh, which port to look out for, and so on. So have you guys used the Raspberry Pi store? 
who the people who have used Raspberry Pi. Okay, the store is pretty cool here. Like, uh, I have a few games which I keep playing all the while. So it's like a complete PC itself. Okay, so for those who haven't seen Raspbian OS before, this is uh, what it looks like. This is the default view. I I'm using the GUI because I've been used to that. And uh, otherwise, you could just simply use the CLI and work, uh, work and play around with that. I'm using the GUI. I'm, uh, I can play around with all, the, all of these things. So I have Python already uh, integrated into it. Uh, the thing which he was talking about is the Pi store. You go to internet. So I mean, there are multiple things. It's simply you can use all of your commands here and get started. I installed Python on it. And uh, once this thing is fixed, once we are able to get the serial output from the Arduino Uno, we'll take that output into Raspberry Pi. So just for that, uh, just for that uh, data to be collated and sent across to cloud, uh, what we are using is we are using the SDK, Azure SDK for Python. So uh, we guys usually work on Azure. So uh, you, if you want, you can work on that. You, you, you can work on any other cloud, AWS, etc. But here, what you're doing is you're basically using the SDK. So I installed the SDK first using pip. Then I uh, went ahead and wrote some about 12, 13 lines of code. So uh, if I just show you, this is the thing. So uh, first of all, it's a serial port, one bit at a time, one connection at a time. Uh, and then I am using something called Events Hub, which I told you about, which is just basically used to ingest millions of events per second. For right now, uh, per second, we'll be sending three items humidity, temperature, and light. Uh, after an after interval of each second, we'll be getting three JSON records in our table, uh, in our uh, serial port. After that, if you see, uh, I've basically initialized some things. So uh, I've initialized the key name, the key value, all of these things you'll get from the portal. So if you see the Azure portal, create an events hub there. Just to configure that, to use that in your code, to connect to that. From Python, you'll just need to get, uh, get those key names and key values. So you get that, uh, and the configuration involves setting up a service bus. What is a service bus? A service bus is, again, a utility in which uh, Event Hub is a part of it. So uh, uh, the broader term is a service bus. Under, under that, there's something called Events Hub. We have topics, relays, multiple things uh, uh, along with that, but that's not the question right now. But to connect to that, I've given the name, I've given the key value, the uh, things, and after that, uh, if I just want to connect, uh, send data, I've written a simple while true loop. So this just goes on and on. Uh, I've taken the serial port input from ACM0. So if you would see, uh, we, we can find out on which port it is connected. So if there are multiple uh, Arduinos connected to your Raspberry Pi, you'll need to figure out on which, which data you want to get input from. And after that, you want to send that data to wherever you want to. Hey, so you want to show this one? OK, I'll just show this once. So uh, this will start sending the JSON data. And the data which it's getting displayed is. So now uh, this is working, flashed again. Um, now this is giving out data once it starts. So it's, it's, it's not, not like it can run four or five apps. So you have to burn the stuff which we saw, saw there into this. It's all working. Now what he would do is he would run the. Uh, Python script here, uh, and this is also talking, so it'll, it should get it from the serial port without error this time. Okay, just give me a minute. Yeah, this is this is a different uh, thing. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So he'll just change it in the code, so it either becomes one or zero, something got connected before. So it is ACM1. I just go here. So, it. yep. And you see next to that is the baud rate. So we have said that while programming this guy. No. Is this because this is within? Does this have internet? Huh, yeah. So is that, that, is that working? Can, that also can cause a problem. Which was on Arduino then? Yeah, this was working here. OK, so I think the problem is with the internet. So if this is failing. Uh, that error comes because of the internet thing. Uh, let's just take this back here. Yeah, take that back here. And so yeah, your internet of things is not complete if you don't have the internet. It becomes only of things. <laughs>
yeah yeah so we'll uh, put up the, the question answers if you see just be, be we'll take the questions because i guess we are running short of time yeah. but we we'll still we'll still try to do this before we go yeah and, yes, and, uh, and uh, uh, some other things is once we send this to somewhere which can Works. be a cloud or uh, some storage you can do any analytics you want right so that part is still left okay about the microcontroller part uh, my question is uh, now you are using arduino right for programming a vr so generally earlier what we are doing is just use an editor and use the avr gcc compiler and use avr dude or something to upload it right so the environment like arduino how much advantage it gives by hiding all the details from us is it really you know <laughs> Going for Arduino, or we should go for a simple approach of writing the C code and use okay, a compiler so and you know upload it. So uh, Arduino is basically uh, mostly a prototyping device, uh, and it is very very. So if you want to do a quick prototyping kind of thing, works very good. Uh, but your point is valid. If you want to go with traditional C, C++, you know, in fact, you don't want uh, Arduino layer in between. You can absolutely do that. People do that uh, with, with when they go when you have formulated your old device with the architecture and you want to burn a SOC, uh, system on chip, like the final device, then I would think about even this guy runs something of that sort, like uh, Core C. Hello. Uh, my question is like the applications which you have shown, like so many uh, cost saving in terms of dollars, 60 billion and so on. Do you have some application for India? Like where it is useful? Yeah, I, 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 I know of consumer. There's a customer who worked with us called Zsense. Okay. They have done whole uh, home automation okay. in India. You can check out their website. Okay. So there are a lot of Indian customers coming in in picture as well. Sure. Right? So Zsense is one of them. Uh, there are customers, Cardio Labs, which are into healthcare. They have created those smart wearables, uh, which patients use it to wear, the heart patients especially. So it kind of monitors th that data, sends it to the cloud, and the doctor is able to monitor them. Okay. Thank you. I, it was working. Yeah. It oh, what yeah. about the data visualizations? Because we have the large set of data, so if you need to plot it on the client side uh, of a web browser, yeah. so what do you use? Uh, do you use WebGL or a D3 with a React, something like that? You can use anything. Uh, you can use React. Like especially, that is not a problem. If my data is there on some storage, I can use anything to bind to it. More problem on the Azure side of things or IoT side of things is the analytics part of it. Uh, so actually, uh, there's a lot of data coming uh, to the client side, and we correct. have to uh, store it real time. Yeah. So what would be the best suited for it? OK. Uh, you, can, uh, you can absolutely use React, right? So it's, it's uh, your client can always fetch data from the cloud service and show it here. For reducing that data or showing only the real important data, uh, you can run some kind of uh, analytics there, uh, Apache Storm, uh, to get only those important data and show it there in your UI. Like you, ob obviously, you won't show one million devices data coming in, but only you will figure out those exceptional conditions and show out there. For that, you is you will need something like uh, uh, Apache Storm or Stream Analytics to get those exceptional data out and put it on your UI. For, for the UI part, we have a solution called uh, Power BI. Power BI is a dashboard, UI-based dashboard, all with JavaScript done. Uh, and you can actually select whatever data source you want to connect it to, and it'll show you beautiful real-time UI. So in fact, we have this table uh, for the output. Where when we capture the output, JSON on cloud, uh, we've used, again, something called tables, uh, in which we have inputted the exact Format in uh, exact format in which exact columns in, uh, which we want. So if you see right here, it's it's giving me unit of measure, value, grid. So this is fetching data from Azure right now. Uh, my question was, you said uh, we will be able to ping devices. Oh yeah. The, the sensors. So how do you do that? We'll take it offline. So I have a Node.js uh, app running on the smaller device. Um, now this is not using the V8 engine traditionally. Uh, it uses the Chakra engine. So I have that you can run any node capability on this small device now. You can even, if you want for UI, you can use Express. So what I do is, I, th that is running on Windows IoT. Uh, so I didn't want to show that. But Windows IoT, uh, and it can run Node.js on top of it, and I can ping it. So if you were to ping it and get the real-time values from the sensor, you can do it right now if we all are in the same network. Hi, no. Mike. 
Yeah, my question is like, uh, I'm that programming type of guy and this nice easy stuff. And I have a really problem with the synchronous and asynchronous thing that happens with Raspberry Pi and Arduino part. So uh, that is a part where you guys can help us. Where do we start from that circuit thing? Okay. Uh, you so are from electronics side? No, I'm from computer side. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so we'll take that offline. Uh, we'll be here. Uh, in that desk, we can actually run through all the setup here. Right? Okay. Next question there. Guys, any question? Okay. Sir, why you are using C++ instead of Python? Uh, we are using <laughs> Python. <laughs> uh. So uh, this this device uh, over here, Arduino. Uh, so uh, yeah. So so Uno. Uh, this is pretty. Uh, li all the libraries were meant for that. It uses C++. It, the runtime is based on that, so it works well. Uh, for this guy, see, Python is like we would have to think about embedded Python in such scenarios, right? Uh, the full Python uh, might not run well on this small device. Uh, this is a very small device. The I know, sir. It is a small device. Uh, but even now uh, you use C also you are using in uh, Arduino. Arduino. Yeah. But uh, why you don't use Python? It's just because it's ah. more suitable for little bigger devices. It's awesome at doing data analytics and stuff like that. Ah. But uh, for a, a 128KB device, 256KB device, uh, I I couldn't find a better solution. Yeah, uh, this, this, this doesn't have much capability, so. Yeah, Thank you. but if you look Python at little bigger devices, <laughs> Python is app solution. Yeah. So right. that's why. For all those other things, Python is. Thanks, guys. That's uh, it? So, OK, thank you. Cool, then. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. And we'll be sitting in the booth outside for some time. So if you want to see how this is done, catch up with us. Yeah, uh, especially if you want to see how Node thing works here, uh, we can show you there, right there.